Water cooling your computer has been around for the longest time. The industry ushered in water blocks to the mainstream back in 1996, but the idea of cooling your PC with water actually stems from back in 1951. The first recorded personal computer with water and copper heat pipes was the Univac 1, also known as the Universal Computer 1. The Univac 1 was first announced by the Census Bureau back on 31 March 1951, however installation of the device only completed in the following December. It took over a year for them to install the PC. Univac, the giant electronic brain made only by Remington Rand, takes business statistics from magnetic tape, letters, numbers, and punctuation marks, processing them through its electronic circuits at phenomenal speed. The Univac 1 was a garage sized PC that consumed a whopping 125 kilowatts of electricity. It included a robust water system with giant copper heat pipes that were fed throughout the device and fans to help further keep things cool. The water cooling system was so big that they actually deemed it a refrigeration unit and called it the Centravac. Pumps would circulate the water through the system and the condensation tower was built outside the building. There were also fans outside the building which were used to pull in air. Over 8,000 checks an hour with this high speed printer, Univac leads the field of electronic computing. We now have better cooling systems in our PC than this entire building sized water system. We can also build our PCs in the comfort of our own home and it doesn't take an entire year to make them. But what does a water cooler do to your PC and how do you know which one is best for you? In this guide I want to go through the basics of water cooling and explain it all. For this guide, I'm currently using the Asus ROG Ryujin 3 alongside an Intel 14th Gen Core i9-14900K CPU. It has been installed in the Asus ROG Maximus Z790 Dark Hero motherboard built into this awesome Asus Hyperion case. So what does a PC water cooler do and what is the difference between air cooling and water cooling? Typically speaking, when building a PC or upgrading your cooler, you'll look for a unit called an all-in-one cooler or also known as an AIO cooler. All-in-one here means the cooler comes with all the parts needed to liquid cool your PC. This includes the radiator, the fans and the pump. An ARO essentially works by absorbing the heat from the base plate which is carried through the one pipe into the radiator. As the water flows it picks up more heat and carries it. Once in the radiator it gets cooled down by being exposed to air. That cooled water is then sent back down the other pipe back onto the base plate to cool it and repeat the process. The higher RPM of the pump the faster this hot water is sent to the radiator and returned as cool water to the base plate. Fans also play a critical role in this process by blowing cooler air through the radiator and helping cool the water down. Some coolers do get a bit more complicated and include reservoirs and advanced pipes. However, for this content, I'm going to tackle mainly the standard coolers, which come in 120mm, 240mm, and 360mm. You also get 420mm coolers, but those are quite niche still, and enthusiasts usually know what they're getting when they're buying one. Essentially, these numbers dictate what size your cooler is. Usually they come with either one, two or three fans and go up in size for each. A one fan cooler is 120 millimeters, a two fan cooler is 240 millimeters and a three fan cooler is 360 millimeters. Each fan is 120 millimeters. In the case of 420 millimeter coolers, these radiators usually house three 140 millimeter fans. The radiator for each size also increases to accommodate the fans. This is where finding the right size cooler comes in. Certain PC cases are limited in size and can only house 120mm and 240mm coolers. Large PC cases, and the majority of them to be honest, can easily fit 360mm coolers and down. So you need to make sure your PC can accommodate your cooler size. The best way to check this is to read the product manual on your PC case or the website for the brand that makes the case. This Asus Hyperion gaming case for example can house two 420mm coolers but this case is kitted out with the Ryujin 3 which is a 360mm cooler. Getting the right cooler is also dependent on your motherboard. Intel and AMD motherboards have different brackets so you'll need to make sure the cooler you get includes the right bracket. Most coolers these days come with a range of different brackets to suit all different types of Intel boards so this isn't as big of a deal as it used to be. But always check what your CPU socket is on your motherboard and make sure your cooler comes with the right bracket mount. 
These mounts are metal-like ring extras that will screw onto your motherboard and keep your CPU and cooler secure and the base plate attached to your CPU surface. In the perfect world, all chip brands and motherboards should use the same mounts, but sadly that isn't the case. Another factor to consider when picking up a cooler is whether or not you plan on overclocking your CPU. The latest CPUs from Intel for example run incredibly hot and if you want a bit more juice from them without going into liquid hydrogen tests, you'll need a beefy cooler to manage this extra heat. Coolers have also advanced into a new tethered design. Previously, every fan on a cooler would usually come with two wires, one to control the RGB and monitor the RPM, and the other to power the fan. Brands like Asus have since switched this up. The Ryujin 3 cooler now comes with a magnetic fan connector that tethers all three fans together while powering them and transferring all RGB and RPM information through a single wire. This means things are clutter-free and so much easier to install. With one wire instead of six wires, this not only helps with cable management, but also for new PC builders who can get overwhelmed by the number of cables. When installing your cooler, brands are usually quite helpful with how all of them are set up and placed. You'll always want to install your cooler radiator on the top side of your PC case or the front. Installing it at the bottom can cause some long-term issues. Due to gravity, the pump will need to send water up and down the bottom of the PC case. Instead of incoming water from the top and easily flowing into the base plate cooler, the pump needs to work on sending water up and down at the same time. As a result, they tend to not last as long. It is doable, but keep that in mind. Coolers can also be monitored using built-in software like the Asus Armory Crate. Software like this gives you a good glimpse at the current temperature of your cooler and water and how fast the unit is working. You can also set up various presets to change the fan speed and performance depending on your scenario. Given that these pumps can get loud, you'll only want to get them loud when you really need them. While I was at it, I did benchmark this Intel Core i9-4900K CPU. The CPU includes a total core count of 24 with 8 performance cores and 16 efficiency cores. It packs a max turbo frequency of 6GHz, but the base performance core out of the box is 3.2GHz while the efficiency core is 2.4GHz. If you're looking to easily overclock your CPU without worrying about core counts and technical knowledge, Asus has its AR overclocking feature which is likely the best bet here. For beginners, it offers a one-click experience where your system will automatically stress test your PC build, its cooling, performance and power limits. Running this is very simple, you toggle the settings in the armory crate and the PC will restart. Sometimes the settings will ask for you to confirm the overclocking in the BIOS. Enter the BIOS and make sure all the enhancement tweaks show AR overclocking. Once done, save the BIOS and restart the PC. It will then show overclocking has been activated. I did run some Geekbench tests before and after the AR overclocking, so you can see that after setting up the auto run feature, the score did slightly increase. The same goes for Cinebench. Keep in mind that this was done with the most basic user-friendly overclocking method around, a great way for new users to get more juice from their CPU. Keep in mind that this specific Intel CPU is already overclocked out of the box, so running a tool like this makes very little difference. That's why the chip runs so hot. There's very little room for improvement on a standard PC setup. You'll need an advanced overclocking motherboard and need to tweak the per core turbo multipliers to really see the difference on the CPU. But for other entry level CPUs, this AR overclocking tool is great. So let's recap, be sure to get the right cooler size for your PC case. Always install your radiator on the front or the top of the case. Make sure you use the right mounting brackets and don't be afraid to run some AR overclocking tools to get more power from your PC. These tools will optimize the frequency and energy use of your PC to best suit your setup. So those are just a few tips you should keep in mind when looking at water cooling your PC. Huge thanks to Asus for sending this equipment over for me to play around with. Do you have any questions on these methods? Let me know in the comments down below. Also be sure to like and subscribe while you're here and visit Glitch.online for more gaming tech news and reviews. Until next time, farewell.